Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to day number 15 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to 3D model a painter's tripod for 3D printing. If you're not familiar, a painter's tripod is a pyramid that you can rest items on with minimal contact, allowing you to paint or stain both sides at once. We'll take a look at how to loft to a point, the project sketch feature, the mirror feature using midplanes, and we'll talk about setting up our file so we can change the dimensions without causing any errors. To get started, we'll create a new component by selecting new component from the assemble dropdown list. I'll title this painter's tripod and click OK. Now we'll start to create the pyramid by sketching a triangle for the base. I'll hit letter L on the keyboard for line, and I'm going to select the top plane. I'll click on the center origin, and I'm just going to drag my mouse out and click three times creating a closed profile triangle shape without worrying about the size and the shape. While holding down the shift key, I'll select all three lines, and then I'll select the equal sketch constraint. So you'll see that this immediately made all three lines an equal size. And if I click on this point and drag the triangle, it will resize all three at the same time. I'm going to hit the letter D on my keyboard for dimension, and I'll select this top line and enter 60 millimeters for the distance. Now, after punching in the dimension, you'll see that the other lines change to 60 millimeters as well. Along with that, adding the dimension also fully constrained our triangle sketch, which is signified by all the lines turning from blue to black. Now if I try to drag any of the points around, it won't let me. All that I can do is change the dimension number, which is what we want, so we know this triangle won't change size or shape unless we want it to. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and save our design. I'll click on the save icon, type out painter's tripod, and I'll click the blue save button. Now we're going to create an offset construction plane in which we'll create a point on before we use the loft feature. I'll select the offset plane icon in my toolbar or from the construct dropdown list, and then I'll select on the triangle sketch. I'll type in 50 millimeters for the offset distance, and then I'll click OK. We'll right click on the plane and select create sketch. Now we could just insert a point here, but instead I'm going to first project the sketch so we can reference it. I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut letter P for project, and then I'll select the three lines and click OK. And I'll show you why I'm projecting this sketch in just a minute. First, I'm going to hit letter X for the construction line, and you'll see in the sketch palette that as I keep hitting the X key, it will toggle the construction line feature on and off. So I want it to be selected blue, which is on, and I'll then hit the keyboard letter L for line. Now I'm going to draw two construction lines from the vertex of the triangle to the opposite midpoint, giving us the exact centroid or the center of the triangle. Now I'll select the point feature from the sketch dropdown menu, and I'll select where the two construction lines intersect, and it should snap into place for us. I'll hit the escape key to exit the point command, and now we're going to loft from our base triangle to the point that we just created. I'll select loft from the create dropdown menu. I'll select the triangle profile as the base, and then I'll select the point and it should connect the loft without us having to create any additional guide rails. And we'll go ahead and click OK in the loft dialog box. Now before we go any further, I'll show you why I projected the sketch to create our midpoint. So the reason I did that is so our midpoint is driven by the initial triangle sketch. If we double click on the original triangle sketch and change the dimensions to 100 millimeters and then click stop sketch, you'll see that the midpoint is still exactly in the center. Now, if you remember right after our initial sketch, we used the offset plane feature. 
So if we want to manipulate the height of our triangle, all we have to do is double click on the offset plane in our timeline, and we can change the dimension and click OK. If there's one thing that I want you to learn in this tutorial, it is the idea that you should always be setting up your models where you can go back and edit or change sizes without causing any crazy shapes or errors in your model. Now I know for this pyramid shape, it may not seem like that big of a deal, but as you start to create more advanced components and assemblies, keeping this in mind will save you a ton of time and you'll hopefully avoid a lot of frustration. I'm gonna go ahead and click undo a few times until we're in the original dimensions, and then I'll click stop sketch. Now we'll want to shell out this item so we're not wasting any more 3D printing filament than we need to. I'll select shell from the modify dropdown list, click on the bottom surface of the pyramid, and then type in two and a half millimeters for the thickness, and I'll click OK. One of the last things we'll do here is cut out some circles on the side. Again, this is going to help us save on filament, and it really shouldn't take away much of the shape strength. And for those of you who are familiar with 3D printing, you likely know that a circular shape like this can be printed without any problems since each layer comes out just a bit further. I'm going to hit letter P for project, and I'll select one of the sides of the pyramid. Then I'll select all three lines that make up the face of the triangle and then click OK. I'll hit letter X to turn on the construction line and I'll hit letter L to draw two lines from a vertex to the opposite midpoint. Once we have our centroid or center point of the triangle, I'll go ahead and click X on the keyboard again to turn off the construction feature and then I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter C for center circle. I'll select where the lines meet, I'll drag out with my mouse, and I'll type in 25 millimeters. Hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place, and of course, click with my mouse to set the circle in place. Now to cut this circle away, I'll hit letter E for extrude, select the circle, and for the extent, we'll want to select to object, which will allow us to select the inside of the triangle surface, again ensuring that if we change the shell thickness or anything else with the model, then we wouldn't have to go back and edit this extrude cut, as it should always go to the inside surface that we selected. Looking at the extrude cut preview, you can see that our cut looks right, so we'll click OK to close the extrude dialog box. Now we could create the other two holes one by one following the same steps that we just completed, or we could also mirror the extrude cut onto the other two sides of the pyramid. If we take a look at the pyramid from the bottom, it may seem a bit tricky because if we mirror our features straight across, they'll end up at the vertex of the pyramid and not the face of the pyramid. Therefore, we're going to have to create a few midplanes that we can reference before we use the mirror command. To create the midplanes, I'll select midplane from the construct drop-down menu, and all we have to do is select the left face and the right face, and you'll see that it creates a nice midplane directly in between the faces we selected. So let's right-click on the bottom face and select repeat midplane, and then we'll select our left face, giving us a midplane between these other two faces. Now we can go ahead and mirror the extrude cut to the other sides. I'll select mirror from the create dropdown menu. Then in the mirror dialog box, we'll need to select features as the pattern type, allowing us to select the extrude cut in the timeline. For the mirror plane, we'll select either one and we'll change the compute option to optimize because it uses the least amount of code and it will run the fastest. Although I should note that Optimize doesn't always work for more complex mirrored objects. I'll also go ahead and put a more detailed write-up of the three different compute options in the comments of this video. Now if we click OK, you'll see that it successfully mirrored our extrude cut. I'll select the extrude cut in the timeline, right-click and select Repeat Mirror, 
This way, our pattern type and object are both already selected for us, so we'll just have to select our other midplane. And then we'll change the compute option to optimized again and click OK. Now the last thing we'll want to do here is add nice rounded edges to our model before we export for 3D printing. We can hide these planes out of the way by selecting them and hitting the keyboard shortcut letter V to view or hide objects. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter F for fill it and I'll select the three lines that make up the top of the pyramid as well as all six edges of the circles. Once everything's selected, I'll enter 1.5 millimeters for the fillet radius to give it a nice and subtle rounded edge, and I'll click OK to exit the fillet command. Now, if you do have access to a 3D printer and want to print some of these out, then you can simply right click on the component and select Save as STL. From there, you'll have to select the component or the object. And you can either click OK to save the file to your local hard drive, or you can check Send to 3D Print Utility and select your 3D printer slicing software. Now I'll go ahead and select Cura, and if I click OK, you'll see that it should open up the file in the slicing software. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.